In episode 63, we came across a brilliant German scientist called Johanna Budwig. She studied pharmacy under Hans Kaufmann, the founder of the German Institute for Fat Research. She gained PhDs in physics and chemistry, she gained a qualification as a medical doctor, and she became Germany's leading expert on nutritional oils. Her research led her to the conclusion that almost all aspects of health are governed by unsaturated fatty acids in the diet. That got her into conflict with some of the most powerful players in the economy of the world, the giants of food production and food processing and Big Pharma. Dr. Budwig showed that health comes from naturally produced food prepared with the absolute minimum of processing. Food producers don't like that. Naturally produced organic food relies on natural soil fertility, and that depends on a rich and varied soil population which recycles organic wastes. They produce the range of minerals, vitamins and other nutrients needed by crops to produce nutritious foods and to maintain their own resistance to pests and parasites. Mass food producers pay very little attention to soil health. They provide a handful of chemicals which stimulate plants to grow quickly, but with limited nutritional value. Such crops have little natural resistance to plant diseases. These sickly, nutritionally deficient crops have to be sprayed with poisons to save them from destruction by plant pests. The very creatures which God made to protect us from eating such deficient food. These little creatures were designed to reduce the sickly plants to shreds which the soil population could turn into nutritious compost for the next generation of crops. But with a surfeit of poisons and a lack of organic material, the soil population dies. The soil becomes effectively dead and has little ability to support growth of anything able to produce the radiant, abundant health which the Creator intended for his creatures. Poison spray residues remain in the harvested crops. When food processors receive these nutritionally deficient crops, a major concern is making them last long enough to reach the markets. Much of the health-giving nutrition of grains is in the germ and the husk. With the germ in place, all kinds of weevils, moths and insects will find their way in to feast on these grains. With the germ and the husk removed, Grains have little taste and little nutritional value. Weevils and other hungry little creatures go somewhere else to look for food. After mixing with preservatives, the low nutrition products of the food manufacturers will last long enough to reach the customers. Sadly, the preservatives are not good for one's health. The situation with oil crops, like sunflowers, is just as bad. Sunflowers are an excellent source of oxygen transporting oil. Sunflowers should be eaten raw. Sunflower oil has a wonderful component called linoleic acid. This unsaturated fatty acid has an oxygen grabbing structure which can take oxygen from the blood, transport it to the cells of the body and give up the oxygen to the cell. It can then go back and get more oxygen from the blood. But if this oil is pressed out of the seeds and put in a bottle, by the time it reaches a retailer's shelf, it has grabbed oxygen from the air and turned rancid. Customers don't like rancid oil. So the manufacturer chemically alters the oil to destroy its ability to grab oxygen. This hydrolyzed oil is effectively worse than useless to the human body. The cell expects to get oxygen from these molecules and can't. So it falls back on an emergency method of making energy without oxygen, fermentation. 
but fermentation produces lactic acid as a byproduct. The cell pushes the lactic acid out and tries again to get some oxygen from the normal source, fats which usually carry oxygen. But it still finds no oxygen, so it has to go on with fermentation. More lactic acid gets pushed out of the cell, and very soon, there are anaerobic acid conditions ideal for cancer cells to thrive. Much of this hydrogenated oil is polymerized to make margarine, which is one nutritionally defective molecule joined to another nutritionally defective molecule. They are even more effective in creating cancer-causing conditions. Unsaturated animal fats are also treated to make them inert, so they will last on the shelf. It becomes very difficult to find any nutritionally useful polyunsaturated fats in a supermarket. Dr. Budvig's research showed lack of polyunsaturated fats in the diet is a major cause of heart attacks, cancer, arthritis and other diseases. Her research shows that the most nutritionally versatile oil comes from flaxseed, which is also called linseed. It contains an unsaturated fatty acid called linolenic acid. Like the linoleic acid in some flowers, it has grabbers for oxygen which transport oxygen from the blood to the cells of the body. Flaxseed oil has the ability to react with sulfur-rich proteins in fermented milk products like cottage cheese and quark. It makes a very thin fluid which can carry oxygen to the smallest recesses of the body. It can take oxygen right into a tumour. The body's amazing disease-fighting apparatus, the immune system, can only work in oxygen-rich conditions. The immune system can't work in the acidic, oxygen-starved conditions within a tuber. But Dr. Budvi's oxygen-carrying miracle fluid takes oxygen right into the tumour. The immune system can then get to work to destroy the cancer cells. This is one of the reasons Dr. Budvik was nominated for a Nobel Prize seven times. But instead of leading to a Nobel Prize, it got Dr. Budvik in trouble with the next giant powerhouse, Big Pharma. Even though its cancer medications are very expensive and make billions in profits, they're not very effective and usually only postpone death often by just a few weeks or months. The medicines are so profitable that medical practitioners get large kickbacks for prescribing them. As Rahima Ellis reported in NBC News, it is a unique situation in medicine. Unlike other kinds of doctors, cancer doctors are allowed to profit from the sale of chemotherapy drugs. Sadly, there are physicians cashing in on this. There have even been cases where patients have been told they have cancer just so the doctor could get his kickbacks, even though the patient did not have cancer. Lisa Rappaport, a Reuters health reporter, wrote, Cancer drug choices are tied to drug manufacturers' payouts to doctors. A paper in The Oncologist confirmed Physicians' payments from pharmaceutical companies related to cancer drugs. And the stat reporter, Vinay Prasad, pointed to the cancer growing in cancer medicine, pharma money paid to doctors. I believe that a major contributor to this situation is the success of Dr. Budvik's cancer treatment and the failure of all efforts to get her branded as a quack and her procedures to be outlawed. Dr. Budwig established a care centre where cancer patients who had been given up as incurable and sent home to die could go for help. She dosed them with her flax oil and cottage cheese blend. She gave them an unrefined organic whole food diet 
and she took them outside in the fresh air and sunshine whenever the weather permitted. More than 90% of her terminal patients went home cancer-free. Not surprisingly, many attempts were made to stifle this information and close down her care centre. But Johanna Budwig was recognised as Germany's leading expert on nutritional oils and the lawyers couldn't get anyone with anything close to her expertise to prove her wrong. They failed repeatedly. In Freudenstadt, where she practised, her success was so well known that the lawyers complained that the courts were biased in her favour. They had no success in Rottweil, where she was again acquitted. So they demanded a trial for her alleged medical malpractice in the main court of assizes in Stuttgart. They still failed. So they took their vitriol to the newspapers. But she was able to respond, and even more people came to realise that her methods worked, and the commercial methods did not. In a lecture at a biotechnological conference in Navigas in June 1966, she said, Through these public attacks, more patients than ever before come to me for consultation and treatment. I am now in the fortunate position of being able to say to you that among general practitioners, most of them firmly declare for what I do. Only the institutions and their managers still defend the obsolete methods. And what do I actually do? I give cancer patients simple, natural foods. That is all. I take sick people out of the hospital, where it is said there that they do not have more than an hour or two left to live. In most cases, I can help even these patients quickly and conclusively. Dr. Budwig was invited to speak at conferences all over Europe. She was often given ovations after her presentations. But there is still very little recognition by the scientific establishment. If she'd been active a few decades later, she'd probably have faced the kind of persecution Richard Milton talked about in episode 80. Johanna Budwig died in 2003. The establishment has been far less vicious to her memory than to many who have crossed their paths. That's almost certainly because there were so many people who were totally convinced of the value of her treatments. We can see two typical reports on Dr. Budwig from the internet. Wikipedia says of her, Based on her research on fatty acids, she developed a lacto-vegetarian diet that she believed was useful in the treatment of cancer. There is no clinical evidence that the Budwig diet is effective, and it may cause adverse effects. An article in WebMD in July 2023, What to Know About the Budwig Diet, says... Dr. Budwig believed that milk and cottage cheese help your body absorb the omega-3 more efficiently. Flaxseed is also rich in nutrients called lignans and phytoestrogens. Research also shows that these may have anti-cancer and hormonal benefits. Still, there is not enough research or evidence to provide solid conclusions about these beliefs. This article also claims there are risks on the Budwig diet. The second article is not even truthful about her diet. Both claim that there is no clinical proof that her method has any merit. Both claim there are dangers in using her method. They're both correct about the clinical research. The establishment has made sure that no trials of her methods have been done at any institute which they recognise, or by any researcher that they recognise. They're determined there never will be. The results of her clinic are so well known that so far nobody has seriously tried to deny them. 
but those results do not constitute a clinical trial recognised by them. Many people have tried her methods with wonderful results. I personally had a large tumour in my right shoulder more than ten years ago. In my ignorance, I went for an operation. When I woke from the anaesthetic, the surgeon told me that the cancer was so large it enveloped the nerve in my right arm, so they couldn't cut all the cancer out without cutting the nerve and leaving me paralysed. The oncology unit had a meeting. They told me why they couldn't do any of their usual treatments without destroying the nerve. And they assured me this type of sarcoma always returns, even if they cut all of it out. They told me to come back every two weeks. When the cancer returned, they would have to assess exactly what to do. My son-in-law introduced me to Dr. Budvich, and I began flax oil and cottage cheese blend with every meal. I went back every two weeks to the oncology department. Eventually, they gave up waiting for the cancer to return. They told me just to come back when the cancer returned. When I got a serious and prolonged exposure to electromagnetic radiation about a year ago, I became ill. A doctor told me the cancer was coming back in my lymph system. I immediately went back to the Budwich diet. And by the time my C T scan appointment arrived, they could not find a trace of cancer. But they are right when they say there is a danger to the Budwich diet. When you go on the diet with sound nutrition, fresh air and sunshine, and the flaxseed oil cottage cheese protocol, your immune system becomes the fastest growing part of your body. When you go for chemotherapy, it attacks the fastest growing part of you, usually a tumour and or your hair. If you have chemotherapy while on the Budwich diet, you are asking for your immune system to be wiped out. You will then die if you get the slightest infection. A few years ago, a friend I had known for many years was diagnosed with cancer in the lungs. It had progressed right through to his spine. He was on chemotherapy and not doing well. A friend and I persuaded him to try the Budwich protocol. After a few weeks, he went for a checkup. His cancer was a fraction of its original size. His doctor told him just one more dose of chemotherapy would clear it up immediately. We beseeched him to refuse chemo and continue with Budwick. But he was so convinced that the doctor had told him the truth that we couldn't persuade him. He went for chemo, his immune system was wiped out, and he died of a common cold. I don't blame that doctor for his death. I once studied medicine. I found that nutrition and health did not feature in the course. The medical profession is controlled by big money, which is interested only in making huge profits. <laughs>